Hi, good morning, and welcome to today's Products in Focus. Now, Friday, obviously, we talked about that uh, kind of rate cut there in Japan, bringing the nation into negative territory that could be kickstarting a currency war uh, against China. Now, what we've kind of seen, actually, is action by, uh, or talk in the Eurozone. We've seen talk, obviously, and more like action in, in, uh, in Japan. Uh, but another big question mark is what is China going to go ahead and do next? So at the very start of January, China cut uh, the value of the yuan against all the major other products. And that actually caused a lot of the initial market turmoil that we saw at the start of the year when all the equities began to sell off because there was fears of this big kind of currency war. So China tried to stabilize the markets. They increased the value of the yuan and things kind of settled down ever so slightly. Now you've had Mario Draghi coming out basically saying that they'll do whatever it takes, no limits to what they'll do to support the uh, the Eurozone. You've had the Bank of Japan going to negative territory uh, and even in America, you've had the Fed be a lot more cautious about their rate hike proposals in 2016. So with that in mind and what we've seen in China, what could happen next? So I guess the problem being now with negative rates in Japan, uh, you might see a lot of uh, capital outflow from Japan as people look to find value elsewhere, possibly in the US dollar. So a number of traders will be looking at dollar yen uh, with Deutsche Bank itself coming out with a price target of 125, uh, assuming that people will go for the higher, the higher year yield of the US dollar at the expense of the Japanese yen, which would devalue the yen even further. Now, the yen and the yuan and uh, the trade partnership between those two countries is still very, very important. And there has been a lot of tension there historically uh, in the last you know, 12, 24 months over a lot of the, the islands there in the South China Sea. Um, now, the question that a number of traders are probably going to have is, um, bearing in mind the political situation between some of these countries and, and China, what is a likely uh, outcome? Now, devaluing the yuan in response to uh, these, these other currency devaluations would be an, an easy option. But when China devalued the yuan before, you saw incredible capital outflow from China. And they actually tried to do this back last August, and that caused uh, a little bit of a scare. I think it's something like $800 million worth of assets went flying out of China, and then they panicked and they reversed their decision. Now, China's got a bit of a history right now of making a decision, then panicking as soon as things don't go their way. So we're arguably at a very, very um, important point for China, and uh, they'll be making hopefully very careful considerations as what they're going to do next. But that gives you a little bit of a theme. We're going to be talking about this theme a lot over the next couple of weeks, I'm, I'm very, very sure. In regards to the more tactical near-term stuff, uh, Friday came uh, with a very, very large rally across the equity markets. Uh, but the question is, what's going to happen next? Because when we look at these charts from a technical perspective, we've got a huge candle for Friday, but then today there's been no follow through. And there's not really much in the way of macro data still to come. You've got some PMI data from MarketServe out today and tomorrow. Uh, and then just another few small bit, bits and pieces. You've got some employment data out on Tuesday as well. We'll have a look at that as we go on. But let's start things off by looking at the US 30 and you'll get a bit of an idea as to uh, Friday's rally and uh, where we stand to go next. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a look. So as you can see here, this is US 30, 83% of CMC, CMC market clients are currently long, massive technical breakout. We closed at the top end of its range. That's a 2.4% increase, trading above the 21 period SMA. But as you can see there today, absolutely nothing happening. Uh, if we do get a bit of a reversal, you could be looking at a move back down towards uh, 16 to 76. Um, the next potential support uh, resistance, I think arguably you could take from here. So we're a long, long way away from there right now. Moving on to the UK 100 again, massive increase, trading above both moving averages. Interesting move for the UK 100. Uh, doji formation so far, complete indecision. 75% of CMC market clients are currently short. Next potential resistance, 63.24. Moving quickly on to Japan 25, again, we were much lower to start the session. Huge rally there. Uh, whoa, that's a, over a thousand points, uh, maybe 1,500 points from here to here. Massive move. Other technicals relatively neutral. We're above the 21 period SMA, but below the 55. Next potential um, resistance could be uh, this broken support now acting as potential resistance at 18,531. 60% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. It looks to be that 17,600. 75 could be a strategic potential support level to be aware of. Moving on to dollar yen, 91% of CMC market clients are currently long. 
probably for all the reasons that we just mentioned at the start of this video, this is a huge candle. I've not seen a candle like this for quite some time. Obviously on the downside, we did have this one. Um, but from the upside, uh, smash through both moving averages. Uh, we're in no man's land right now. 123.61 is a potential resistance. We're miles away from there right now. If we do see any retreat, 120 spot 36 could be the potential support. West Texas crude is not doing a huge amount. Well, actually, looking at it from a candle perspective, this is a bearish engulfing pattern. If I quickly go into five minute interval, it's been moving sideways, well, sideways moving lower for most of the morning. Um, so it gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect. 73% of CMC market clients are currently short, uh, anticipating potentially a move back down towards 31 spot 50, which should also coincide with that 21 period SMA. $35 is a longer term potential resistance. Then having a quick look at gold, uh, gold's been uh, quite volatile, moving lower there on Friday, only to reverse course towards the end of the session. Further again this morning, 1,131 is a potential support level, uh, a broken support now expected to act as potential resistance for gold. Uh, and the way the world economy is right now with most other economies uh, kind of cutting their monetary policy, uh, and the US might not be doing as many rate hikes as they were expecting, Gold has some potential here, but until we break above 11.31, it doesn't really get that majorly exciting. 11.13 could be potential support. 73% of CMC market clients are currently long. Finishing up with the currency markets, uh, you can just see a massive reversal there in, uh, in, in, in Euro USD. Um, we are looking at one spot zero eight as potential support. A break below that would open up the tips of these candles and the tips of these candles. And it would be good to finally get at this symmetrical triangle formation. 79% of CNC market clients are currently short. And to finish up with GBP USD, it's pretty horrible at the moment. Very volatile session there on Friday. We were higher, we were much lower, still a negative start. One spot 42.20, very, very low value historically for poor old cable. Look how far we've come. Uh, one spot 70 seems like a distant memory at the moment, unfortunately. Not so good if you're going off on the holiday, uh, with 61% of CNC Marcus clients currently short. In regards to economic data, uh, as I mentioned, we do have a series of, of, of PMI uh, figures coming out from Germany, the Eurozone, the UK and the US, including personal income. Tomorrow brings employment data from Germany and the Eurozone. Wednesday comes with a housing index, PMI again from the Eurozone, uh, and also your uh, weekly petroleum stats report. Thursday, factory orders, employment data, and the Bank of England interest rate decision, which will probably be uh, no change, but it's all about a statement for that. Well, guys, thank you very much for listening. Very good luck with your trading, and join me again on Tuesday to find out what happened next. Thank you very much, and goodbye.